Hello lovely people and welcome to week four of our slow stitch project for 2024. Um, before I get into that I just wanted to um, say something about my hair. <laughs> um, perhaps the more observant among you will notice that I do not have my usual plait. Now um, cloth twining, you know the the twining two strands of cloth together, there's a playlist all about it if you haven't tried it yet. Um, it's something I've been doing for about 20 years and uh, my hair has been plaited for me by my mum or been plaited by myself probably for 55 years, something like that. But I'd never ever thought of putting the two things together until a lovely lady called Machtelt, who's one of my subscribers, hello Machtelt, um, she has a channel where she's junk journaling, I think mostly is what she does, but also some stitching, called um, A Daily Dose of Paper, if you want to check it out. Anyway, she asked me in the comments if I'd ever twined my hair, and it had never occurred to me, so I tried it, and look, I hope you can see. Can you see? I'm looming up into your face. And I love it, and I think it might be my new thing rather than braiding. Anyway, so thank you, Machtelt. Um, so for this week's project, um, I have been reading in our private Facebook group and on Instagram and so on where people have been sharing the projects they've done for the first three weeks. And something that keeps cropping up as a theme is the issue of making choices. Um, so that word is this week's word, choices. Um, it can be that people feel overwhelmed if they've got a lot of stuff, stash, whatever you call it, overwhelmed by the options. And some people have said they take hours and hours choosing the, the little pieces of cloth to make the little assemblages, whatever they are. And if you love that and that's part of your process, then that's absolutely fine. But what is concerning me is some people say, are saying that they're kind of feeling blocked by that. Um, so I wanted to address that a little bit. And I talked a little bit in my studio tour about how I keep my the, the biggest volume of my fabric closed away in boxes. And I take little pieces out. Um, I'll just show you in case you didn't see that. I just happen to have to hand here. And I make these little bundles. Um, so this is just a bundle of various kinds of fabric. This is larger scraps um, bound together. So, uh, so I'll have here a variety of things and, and I'll work from this and I won't go into my main stash, if that's the word you want to use, you know, my main supply of fabric, unless I'm making a larger piece and I want more. But you know, for the little pieces, I'll work from this, or I'll work from my scrap basket, which I'll show you in a bit of teeny tiny scraps. Um, so that's one way, if you've got a lot of stuff, sort of subdivide it, put archive stuff away, and have out just a small selection of what you have. Um, the other thing is when you're actually choosing and kind of auditioning things that go together that can become really stressful or you know anxiety making or whatever as well in a way. Again if it's something you love and you enjoy it then it's not absolutely not a problem. I'm not saying you have to not do that you know it's just if you're finding it that's it's kind of blocking your creativity. Um, so as a means of sort of trying to translate all that into cloth and making something for the week, I thought we would do something that, we're going to make something obviously, but maybe the important aspect of it is going to be how we make it. And you are all on your honour to um, uh, follow along with what I suggest. Of course you can cheat, I'm not going to come to your house and you know see if you're cheating or not. And maybe you don't want to do it, and also obviously that's absolutely fine. But I'm taking inspiration from this that's hanging on the design wall behind me here, which is a lap quilt that I made for my son. It's dated on the back 2009, so 15 years ago. And it's a string quilt. Um, and he was, what would he have been, six or something like that at the time. And as I said, it's made from blocks. There are four by four, so 16 blocks with strips stitched on, on a diagonal. He chose the strips and gave them to me and I sewed them at that time on the sewing machine into the quilt. Now you will see that there is a little bit of an element of control because I divided my strips, my scrappy strips first into lights, mediums and darks. So you know that's, you could, you can control what you use to a degree but then let the rest be serendipitous. Um, I hope that makes sense. So, so my way of doing that then was with the help of a six-year-old. So if you happen to have a six-year-old lying around the place, you know, um, looking for something to do, then you could let them just hand you the strips, and that's a good way to get it random. Um, 
or it doesn't have to be a child, but children are great because they don't overthink. Um, children are great for many reasons, but you know, that's just one. Um, so how I'm going to do it is I'm going to get some scraps, some strippy scraps out of my scraps, and I'm going to put them into um, a basket or, or a bowl or something that I've got laying around the place that I can't really look into, I, you know, I'm not going to choose. And I'm going to, when I make the piece, put my hand in, pull one out, sew it on. Even if I don't think it goes with what's already there, even if I don't especially like it, I'm just going to go for it. Now I can feel some of you freaking out already, but just this is, we're going to make one little piece. Mine's going to be a five inch square. Yours can be obviously whatever size you like. <clears throat> Um, I'm using scrap repurposed cloth so I'm not wasting anything good, um, it's, it's an exercise. Try and think of it more of it as an exercise rather than you're trying to make something, you know, perfect or beautiful or whatever. Um, maybe that in itself is liberating. So um, I'm going to turn the camera up the other way so you can just see my hands on my desk and we'll get into the details of it. Okay, see you in a minute. Okay, so here is my main scrap basket, and um, I have got my stand as high as I can, but I still can't get it completely in. Um, but here are the edges, and, you know, just to give an idea of size it is, in case you're wondering. Um, let me just measure it. It's 18 inches by 12 inches by... Trying to measure the depth, eight inches deep, eighteen by twelve by eight inches deep, and it's got all. Oh, it's just a big tangly mess. Now I don't want to um, start really being choosy choosy. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull out things based only on size. Now if you don't have scraps and you've only got you know bigger pieces of old clothes or other fabric from whatever, then you could just take a huge wadge of those as random as you can be, and then just tear strips off the edge. And in terms of size of the strips, again, we're trying not to stress about that. I'm just going to take whatever, but that's about three quarters of an inch wide, so that's, I'm going to have that. Um, that's an uneven shape, but I don't care, I'm going to have that. Um, that's a strip. So I'm just taking things that are strippy, and I'm not worrying about the width, as long as it's, you know, that's quite wide. We'll throw that in, and all I'm, sorry, I'm throwing it off camera. I've got a slightly smaller basket that I'm throwing them into. I'll show you that once I've thrown them all in. So I'm really just trying to switch my mind off from the choosing, and I'm just pulling them out. And, you know, if you want to distract yourself with something else while you're doing this, just have someone to chat to, or uh, watch a video, watch one of my videos, um, listen to some music, sing along, you know, anything you can to kind of not be there going, oh, will that go with that? How's that going to look in my piece? You know, all those kinds of things that come into your brain. I've got the lovely advantage of being able to chat to you while I'm doing it. So, you see, now I can feel now coming into my brain, oh, you've picked a lot of pale, plain pieces. That thought came into my head even while I was talking to you. I'm going to just let that thought sit there, but try not to give it too much room. If you, those of you who practice meditation, and things like that will... Um, <clears throat> understand what I'm talking about. So I'm trying to not look at colour. There's two stuck together but we'll have them both. Or pattern. I'm just going by size. I hope that makes some sense. Just going by size. I'm going to turn them over and see what goodies are laying underneath. So I'm just looking for strips. Um, maybe a nice exercise would be to close your eyes and do it by feel. I won't do that now because I do need to check all the time that you can still see me. Strips and strips. All we want is strips. Just keep that thought in your head. Strippy strips. I haven't placed any or, you know, I am not cheating. This is just, I pulled my scrap basket out and I'm doing this. Um, if we were all together in one room, then wouldn't that be fun? We could all dip and dive in the same baskets and we could swap scraps and things like that. See, I thought again, more plain, but I'm just going with it. It's just what happens to be here that's the right sort of shape and size. I'm not worrying about how long the strips are because I can join two strips together if they're not long enough or I can obviously cut if they're too long. All this digging has made this real tangle, a real tangle. 
and it never seems to get less. It's like, do you remember the story of the magic porridge pot? It was a, a fairy story about a, a pot of porridge that never got empty. I'm trying not to be distracted by, oh, look at that lovely Dutch chintz. No, go away. We're not, we're not looking at you today. I don't like that, but I'm taking it anyway. <laughs> There's a strip. It's, uh, I've said it before in other videos that random is the hardest thing for the human brain to cope with on the whole. We, we look for pattern. We are pattern seekers. Um, but I think, you know, because of all those things I talked about in the introduction, it's, it's, kind, it's important to observe yourself and see how things make you feel while you're working. And as I said, if, if you're happy doing this, if you can happily sit there for hours going through your scraps and choosing all your strips and everything, then that's fine. So it's just really for those people who, um, who find it a bit, oh, that kind of anxiety, you know, am I going to make the right choice? What if I what if I what if I sew this on there and it looks awful? Um, that kind of thing. And I don't know how many I want. I'm just going to keep pulling until until um, I think I've got enough, or more than enough. Actually, I want a good selection. I might edit this part down a bit if I'm here for hours. But I have had some people asking me, um, could I show how I choose? Because usually I've been choosing in advance. Just being a bit aware of the time it's, it takes, you know. I don't want you all sitting there for hours watching. Although many, many of you lovely, kind people have said you don't mind sitting there for hours watching. But, you know, trying to strike a balance. That's a big long... What's going on and on that piece. But, you know... that's been in cloth twine, but we'll have him. We will have him. We will have him. Anything that's longer than it is wide is a strip, as far as I'm concerned. That piece has got stitching in it. Look at that. I'll save that for something else. Um, just having a look at what I've got already. I don't see anything else strippy. There must be more strip. There's a strippy bit in that big tangly mess. And that's been all sewn together. Can I rip that apart? Yes, I can. So we'll have that. We'll keep those two joined like that. Why not? Um, so I think, I think, I think um, that maybe that's that'll do. That'll do, pig. But then I always want one more, even when I'm doing this on my own some. And I start saying to myself, that'll do. I always want to do one more, and then that'll do. So that'll be the one more, and that'll do. So I'll get the big scrap basket away, plus all the bits that have fallen out. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is what I've got. A rather uncompromising tangle of strippy scraps. Now I don't want to keep them in this basket because I'm in danger of choosing, so they're visible. So I thought I would... Oh, there's another big bit that needs to go in there. I thought I'd use this that I've just made. Part one's up, part two may be up by the time you watch this. Oh, this is my drawstring bag. Because it's a bag, I'm going to put all the strips in there, like that. And because it's drawstring, I can close it up a tiny bit so I can just get my hand in. So I can just, just, yeah, there we go. So I can just get my hand in, but I can't see. So it's like a lucky dip. So in I go and I pull out. And whatever I pull goes on the piece next. Okay? Right, so I'm going to stop again because I have to adjust my stand because you're way up there. So you're a bit lower so you can see me. And then I'll be back again. Okay, so here's my stitch journal that I'm putting my weekly pieces into. Um, also in terms of choosing, I know I've seen that some of you have pre-prepared foundation fabrics for the whole year, all the same size, and that's fine. Some of you are planning to make quilts or wall hangings or things like, or scrolls, so you want your pieces a certain size. Um, my only kind of parameter or boundary is that it has to fit somehow in, in my journal. So, you know, these hung off the edge, even my last week's pieces. 
So in the back of my journal I have put some scraps of old sheet of various sizes but just somewhere within those bounds and they're all different ones. So I'm going to just take that one off the top which looks like a nice square piece um, and put those to one side and I'm just going to take it the size it is because it sits on the page nicely. Um, but just so you know it is four and a half inches square or thereabouts. Okay, so put my journal away for a minute. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <clears throat> so, do I mind which way up it is? You see choices. You're making choices all the time, and that's, you know, it's not a bad thing to make choices. I really hope that I'm not implying that or saying that in any way. It's just being aware when you make choices of why you're making them, and maybe more importantly, how it's making you feel. It's just, just be aware of that. So, um, here's my drawstring bag. Okay, it's too big to stand up, so I'm just going to put my hand in and just pull something out. And that's what I got, that bit of... Now, these are too thin to make proper seams, you know, uh, too narrow, like I did on my string quilt. So um, I'm just going to sew them on any old towel. I might at one point make seams. I'm just going to go with what, what the pieces kind of tell me. So for the, but this, for this first piece, and you can start where you like, that's another choice you need to make. I'm going diagonal because my string quilt that um, I showed you earlier is on the diagonal. But equally you can sew them on like that. That, that really doesn't matter. Again, it's a choice. You see how many choices there are all the time. But I'm going diagonal. So I could now decide to start at one side and work that way, or I could decide to start in the middle and work out. Um, I think I'm going to start in the middle and work out, because I think that's what I did with my string quilt. And I'm just cutting it off roughly. I'm not going to, you know, cut it to match the corner or anything. Um, also, in terms of using scraps and bits, I thought I'd use my little Orts tin. Sorry, he always reflects because he's gold and shiny. Um, so I thought I'd use that to sew my pieces on. And I'm just going to pull out what comes, and that's one strand, I don't mind. I even just chose a needle at random. I'm really pushing myself here today. And I'm just going to sew it on without even really thinking about it. All I want to do is get that little strip of cloth attached to the underpiece. I'm not going to start thinking about how's the next piece going to be or anything like that. So, and I'm just going to do big running stitches, really big, because it's an exercise, and I do not want to start overthinking. At the same time, you, you can notice, um, it's a little bit the same as in the stitch meditation scrolls, you can, because when I make those I use my aughts, my, my thread ends, my thread nest. Notice combinations if you like them or you don't like them. You know, if you don't like them, leave them be. Um, but if you do like them, you might, you can often learn something by doing this that you find things that you don't know you like. Do you see what I mean? If you go random, um, I'm going to leave that attached because there's still thread on it. So I'm just going to use that thread up where I get new thread. So, so yeah, so by doing this, and I go for another strip, that's that wide strip. Um, by doing this, you find combinations of things that you might not have found if you were overthinking. I am going to, don't all shout at me and say I'm breaking my own rules. <laughs> I'm going to rip some off. And I'm going to put the bit I ripped off back in, why not? Just because it was really wide and I want to, you know, I want the exercise to go on for it. And I'm just going to lay that like that. I'm not worrying that it doesn't quite get to the end. Can you see that? I'm not worrying about that. That's not a problem. And I'm just going to come up again through the middle. If you want to pin it, if it bothers you that it shifts, you go ahead and pin it. And I'm just coming back the other way again with my big running, see my running stitches are getting on for half an inch long. It's just to attach that bit of cloth onto the background. It's the only purpose of that. And if my thread runs out halfway a strip, I'll change colour halfway a strip. 
<clears throat> I hope that this does not stress people out because <laughs> I know I know it's hard. I mean when I was a, a normal quilter um, was I ever normal but you know what I mean you know making planned quilts to patterns I didn't actually last very long doing that I very quickly went for scrappy quilts but um, yeah, when I was a normal quilter, I do know that I did want things to match and things to go. And I would buy those those pre-chosen, that's really short, I'm going to end that off, sorry. I'd buy those pre-chosen, um, you know, fat quarter packs or charm squares or whatever <clears throat> of a whole range of fabrics so that I knew they would go. But, you know, and in the beginning, that, that's helpful if you're, if you're struggling with combining things. That is helpful to um, have those things. But um, one, I don't buy new cloth anymore. I like to use old cloth. There we go, I'm going to use this. This has been a seam of something. So it's got the machine stitching in it. But I'm just going to keep it as it is. I'm going to lay it on there like that. And I'm going to cut it off so it just fits onto my piece. And the bit I've cut off, you've guessed it, is going back in. Going in the orts. I'm, not, I'm looking up. I'm not looking, I'm just pulling. I've got several bits there, and that bit's all knotty. Oh dear. Come on, I just want a bit. No, that's need serious untangling. I'll put that to one side and do that later. I'm just pulling another bit. I'm just pulling, I'm, I'm looking up. I'm lo actually, well, no. <laughs> I'm saying I'm looking up. You know what I'm doing? I'm looking on the camera screen. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's come out as two strands. I'm going to use it as two strands. I was cheating. <laughs> Full disclosure. I thought by looking up I wouldn't be able to see my orcs, but I forgot that up above me is my camera screen. Oh dear. Naughty, naughty. Naughty, Catherine. Oh, come on. The two ends are not side by side. There we go. Come on. There we go. <clears throat> so, make a knot. And sew that on. Now here, I can make a choice because I've got a wide piece, so I could sew this further over, do you see? To cover up some of that wide piece. Or I could sew it right just with a bit of an overlap. You could even, if you like, if and especially if you've got a nice backing cloth, and there again, I'm making choices. Do you see how hard it is? You could leave the backing cloth showing. I'm not, I'm going to just put it a little bit over and just stitch it on. I, I hope you, you go with this and you like it, some, you know, most of you. I hope all of you do. And that you don't think, oh, she's not making a nice thing, you know. But, like I said, it's an exercise. See, that's twisted. I know many of you would want to go and iron that. Maybe try and make yourself not iron it. But if it really is making you anxious, the idea is not to make you anxious. The idea is to free you up. So, if it's making you anxious, go and iron everything first. I, hope, I really hope I'm explaining what I'm trying to achieve here in a clear way. <clears throat> it's good to push yourself a little bit outside your comfort zone. Back I go in my basket, my, my bag rather. It's good to push yourself a little bit. It's another wide bit. See, it's all, all the browns are coming out. Because that's quite thin, instead of cutting it, I'm going to fold it in half. That was a choice I made. And it's slightly too long. I'm going to cut a bit off the end. And that's too small. That's not a strip anymore. So I'm not putting that back in. It can go back in the scraps. I forgot what I was saying now. Oh yes, don't don't about not getting stressed out about it. And you know, not having something pretty at the end. That can be really, really difficult to do. We're already our worst critics, most of us. 
aren't we? I mean, I, I see that from some comments in the Facebook groups, people saying, oh, really, you know, admiring other people's work and people saying, oh, I'm afraid to post mine because it's not as good as everybody else's. Well, I would suspect that many, many people think that. And... Um, <clears throat> Many people who who, then, who do post, who are brave enough to post, um, and the response is only positive. I wouldn't have it any other way, you know. It's um, it's not something that's going to happen over there. Any negativity at all. Everybody's very kind and encouraging. <coughs> Sorry. So back I go for the next scrap. But don't don't think oh mine's rubbish compared to everybody else's. So I'm not going to put it there. You oh here comes a big long piece. Which has got in a knot with all the other pieces. It's going on and on and on. Bring another bits with it. Just to fall the other bits back down in so I can't see them. Um probably most, if not all, people think that. There's some part of them that thinks um oh I didn't put that bit back in from the beginning, I'll put that back in. There's probably some part of everybody that thinks I'm not good enough. I'm just wittering. I can't even remember the point of that witter. It started so long ago. See, now here I'm observing in myself. Do you see I've got that nice frayed edge along there? And then here it's been cut, so there's all these little bits. And I know that if I sew it on there like that, that way round, that frayed edge will get covered up by the next piece. So I'm making the choice to turn it and put it that way so that the frayed edge stays there. Um, but I'm aware of what I'm doing and why I'm doing it, so so that's why I'm letting myself do it. <laughs> it's, you know, when you do, if you do this, when you do this, I hope you do, just um, be aware. If, if you find yourself doing things like that, ask yourself why you're doing that. And... Um, as a, again, as I said, ask yourself if it makes you happy, if it makes you... We're doing this for fun, you know? This is in, supposed to be enjoyable. Um, it's supposed to go beyond enjoyable. For me, it's supposed to make you feel good about yourself, about, you know, how you feel and so on. And I go for another one. So, now that's the same one. <laughs> now everything in me screams, put it back and get another. But I'm not going to. I'm going to use the same one again. I am going to, however, allow myself to turn it round so that I have my nice frayed edge just to cheer myself up from the fact that I've now got two strips the same. And I'm also cheating slightly because I've buried it right down the bottom of the bag. <coughs> I'm sorry. <clears throat> got a tickly cough back again. It's gone rainy here again. We had a, a brief spell of... Um, Nice cold crisp weather last week and now the rain's come back. Around the woods this morning I came back soaking, even though I had my coat on and my hood up and my woolly hat on and two wet dogs that had to be dried with a towel. Turn it around. In I go again. bit of pink. What's going on there like that? Put it back in. <clears throat> and stitch it on. Oops. It only took Two of my super huge stitches. Turn it round. Ah, this is a bit of. Um, I love this cloth. It's the memory of this cloth. When I was teaching um, a monthly slow stitch group in my local art centre when I lived in England. One week, well, one month, I asked everybody, I had 25 lovely ladies in my group. One week I asked them to all bring, uh, the following months, I asked them to bring a piece of 
cloth of some kind that had meaning for them and then talk about it. And this little blue bit here was, um, I have to make sure I get him firmly attached. I think there's only going to be one stitch happening. This little blue bit here came from a lady called Barbara, who, um, it was dusters basically. She, she had uh, dusters, but the sheet had been, I think it was her auntie's, and a, or a great aunt. It was a very odd sheet, and it had already been torn into dusters, I think, by her mum. I may be getting the relationships wrong. Um, I'm cutting because I'm at the corner and I need to go and go back the other way. So anyway, and so she talked about this sheet, and it's beautifully soft. Actually, I'm going to digress and show you quickly because it's hanging up here. It's, it's beautifully soft, and um, <clears throat> I admired it so much that she gave me some of it. And you see, it, I, I, it has been washed by her, but um, it's been used as dusters. But, and there were little holes in it. It's cotton, you see, that's the edge. There were little holes in it, so I eyelet stitched them. The little holes. Um, you see there, it's worn. And, and it is, I just love it, and it reminds me of Barbara. She was such a, she, well, she is, she is such a lovely lady. And I admired this, and she just had this big bit, and she just ripped it in half and gave me half. So now we're duster sisters. Um, eyelet stitch, by the way, is something I will be doing in my slow stitches series at one point. But yeah, it's a bit of old raggy duster, but to me it has such value. And I think there's another hole there I could eyelet as well. Yeah. Anyway, I digress, because that was a bit of that. But that's part of the cloth having memories thing. You see, there's a little bit of it there. Okay. Back to what I'm supposed to be doing, which is putting my hand in here to find another bit. Oh, a bit of um, Japanese kimono cotton. Now here I can make a choice because it's double-sided. Do I want the blue side or do I want the dark side? Um, I could also, because I'm tempted to put the dark side, because that's blue and that's blue, I could also challenge myself by saying, I really want to do that, but I'm going to challenge myself and put it that way. And now because I'm going back the other way, do I want to tuck it under that previous piece? Um, because otherwise that, that middle piece is going to disappear. Or do I just put it on the top and let that piece disappear? Uh, I think I'm going to just put it on the top and let that piece just be hidden, because it's, you can see it at the edges and um, it's easier than fiddling about and this is supposed to be something that's relatively you know still in slow stitch mode but not stressing for hours over decisions just doing just doing i'm going to do a knot and that's slightly too short but i'm not going to worry about that if it was way too short and i'm hoping that happens at one point but if it was way too short i would sew something else down here just, again, I pull another bit out and add it on. But it's only slightly short, so I'm just going to go for it. If you want to do smaller stitches, I probably would if I, I you know, if time was not a factor. I probably would do smaller stitches, because I, I don't really feel comfortable doing these huge stitches. Um, if you wanted to do the invisible base stitches and then go over it afterwards in running stitch or something else, you know, once you've got all the pieces on there, um, then you could do that as well if you wanted to work with it more. It's really, because the, the key word this week, this week is choices, it's choosing of the cloths that's the important thing. If you then choose to work more into it, then, you know, again, ask yourself, what's making you do that? Is it because, could be many reasons, it could be because you feel sorry for the little piece that's just been thrown together and you want to give it some value. I nearly peeped then into my bag. Be naughty. Oh no, look. Oh no, oh no. Now I could edit. I could edit and cheat, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to. It's because it's so big. Uh, I'm putting it back in. I'm not, look, I did put it back in. Where is it? Do I need to look? See, I put it back in. It's gone back in. I haven't snuck it to one side. Uh, 
And actually I'm noticing as well that this greeny colour of it, the sort of teal, dark teal colour, I like it better when it's against this than here against the pink with the brown stitches. I find it quite... Mm. Of course the other thing I could do is use it up the other way. And then it, I've, you know, I'm within the rules, am I? You can shout at me if you think I'm breaking the rules by doing that. But if I put it on the other way, it's the same cloth, but it's upside down. But it does feel like cheating to do that. I don't know why. I'm going to go with it. I'm going to cheat. I'm going to cheat so that then you all have permission to cheat as well. But not by swapping the strip for another strip, only by turning the strip over. I will be very interested to see the response to this um, in the Facebook group and, and in the comments. If you don't know what I'm talking, you know, if you if you come new to the project, the, the Facebook group, it's a private group. It's only for subscribers to my channel and um, it's only to share work made in this weekly project and work made from my other tutorials. And the reason I'm doing it like that is not to be mean or exclude people or whatever. It's just to give a space where people can share because it was becoming apparent in the comments that people were wanting to see other people's work and so on. So I really want people to be able to go there and look at other people's work that all relates, you know, to, to this project and the other projects, um, the other things, thingy bobs. I need another thread. I'm looking away to my right, not at my camera screen. <laughs> Just so, there we go, I'm having a bit of this blue. That is several strands. So yeah, so so if you've um, asked to join the group and you've said, you haven't said that you're a subscriber, I will have sent you a message saying, are you a subscriber? And some people have an uh, answered the question saying, no, they're not a subscriber. And I've had to send them a message and say, you know, I really please would prefer it if you... I would prefer it if I could get my thread separated. No, I would prefer it if you did subscribe. But I just wanted to say that because I don't want it to come across that I'm being mean or trying to exclude people. It's more for the members of the group, that the group is, you know, what I set it up to be. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Because I don't want people to think I'm mean, because I'm not mean. I'm not mean. I'm lovely. Everybody says it. Well, no, probably everybody doesn't say it, but... I do think generally I'm a nice person. I hope so anyway. I try to be. I can do no more. But I just wanted to explain that. And, you know, the same thing, if anything ever gets shared there that isn't relevant, and I um, have to take it down and explain to the person why, I do hope you understand that. It's not because I'm being mean. It's because, um, you know, I want the members of the group to feel that that's what the group is. I hope that's understood. Right, in I go for another strip. Oh, a few came out. I'll take that one. That came out first. Cut him off and stitch him on. And I really must say that I am not liking the look of this at all. I feel myself looking at it and thinking, that is hideous. <laughs> but, um, and this piece of cloth is very tightly woven and not nice to stitch through either, so I'm noticing that. But it's okay to look at it and think it's hideous. That's okay, because this is an exercise. I'm not trying to make something lovely. But yeah, everything in me is is rebelling against doing this and wanting to, and or hope. <coughs> oh, I'm so sorry. <clears throat> um, and hoping that the next piece I pull out will somehow make it all look um, nicer. <laughs> but I'm really, really not liking this at all. Even though it is kind of on a color palette. There we go. That's, that's the same bit again. But, you know, I have to, don't I? And it's actually double. I'm just going to sew it on double. Oh, no, it's not quite the same. It's a slightly different colour. Phew! 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 
but you know, you know, I said when I was pulling scraps, all those browns and there's a lot of those coming out, but I went with it and now, surprise, surprise, there's a lot of them on my piece. And I do know, I do remember that there's a bit of my husband's um, silk cravat that um, I um, cut up years ago. There's a little scrap of that gold silkness in there and I would love it if that came out. But if it doesn't, it doesn't. And that's also why I said get plenty, so that you're not... Because otherwise you're choosing at least your strips, if not the order. If you if you pull out just enough strips to work the piece, you know, you're going to use them all. Do you see what I mean? Oh, I'm not finishing off, am I? <coughs> I'm so sorry for the <clears throat> God, tickle in my throat. I should have brought some juice up here. I'm not looking. I was really tempted to look then. Another bit of blue... See, it's just all, it's just all blue and beige, and that tiny bit of pink. The advantage as well, you know, maybe those of you who want to make a quilt won't want to put this piece in your quilt, or maybe you will want to control it in some way, or maybe you will want to put it, I mean, if you wanted to put it in your quilt, then huge respect. I'm not sure I could, but I would have huge respect for you if you were making beautiful, well thought out, design little pieces every month, uh, every week, sorry. And um, then there was this one piece that I'd made you do and you really didn't like how yours turned out but you still included it in your quilt. I don't think I could do that, but if someone did that, I would have huge respect for them. <laughs> I would want to give them a gold star. Because that would really be, you know, I don't know what the word is, but... So, go through to the back, put my hand in, and hope I get a nice piece. Oh, no! <laughs> now look, tell me, tell me, I've got this again, but this came out at the same time. Would it be really naughty if I took this and put that back in? No, I'm going to let myself. You're all shouting at me. Well, I'm doing it. I'm doing it, this piece, this came off a shirt, an old shirt that um, I, I thrifted and then I rust printed it and um, I do rust print clothing but you have to be really careful that you get all the metal out if it's for clothing, well especially if it's for clothing um, but I just, I just didn't like wearing it, it wasn't the rust printing aspect of it, it was um, just the shirt didn't, you know, it's a lovely shirt, all pin tucked and nice I'm folding it double because it's thin again, but it's already folded in several ways, so I'm trying to go away that it doesn't mind being... Maybe it wants to fold into four like that. Let's go for that. Might be quite hard to sew through, but... Um, yeah, so it wasn't, you know, just wasn't the shirt for me. But no biggie, I got lots of nice cloth out of it. I've still, still got lots of nice cloth from it. I haven't either, um, I promise you I didn't, but um, I've got brown thread and blue thread and my cloth is mostly brown and blue. That has just happened, I promise, you know, Scout's honour. I didn't cut that shorter first, but I'll cut it now, being careful not to cut my thread. And, and I'm just thinking now about the... Um, when I when I make these videos, I have to do the little screen at the beginning, which is called a thumbnail. I didn't know that's what it was called until I started doing this. <laughs> More beige. <laughs> um, you know, the little screen at the beginning, which is the title of the video, and um, me sitting on my terrace outside in my green Icelandic jumper, working on um, a quilt. That photo of me that you will... Again, that's folded in half. Um, and then behind, what the, the left at the left hand side as you look at it is the title of the video and then behind the title is always a picture of whatever it is, you know, that's featuring in the video. That's, that's my kind of template that I use. So I'm going to have to take a picture of this little raggy thing and put it on that thumbnail. Maybe I'll just make the writing really big so you can hardly see it. 
Poor thing. I feel sorry for it because I'm being so mean about it. But hey. It is what it is. Yeah, that's C, and I'm f don't fiddle with it. That's right. Probably one more, and I'm done. Oh, <laughs> well, it had to be, didn't it? It had to be. If you don't want that to happen to you, don't put a huge, great, big, long strip in with a load of little strips. Mm. Oh well, probably it couldn't have been any other way. I don't even remember where that came from. It's spray time, I think. It's a, it's a fabric called spray time. It's, it's new. It's obviously someone's off cut. Very possible that I've got it from, you know, when I was teaching and in person and going through ladies' bins at the end of the day. That's where a lot of those bits came from. I've said that in a previous video. I can't remember which one. But when I used to teach in person, um, some of those ladies would throw great big huge pieces. Even on the back, you see, I'm just going to jump all the way over there. Which normally I would think would be a waste of thread and I'd stop and start, but because it's from my aughts, I'm going to let myself do that. Yeah, so I go through the bins at the end of the day and um, get myself a little, or sometimes a big, <laughs> bag of scraps. And that is that. So, I put my the ones that didn't make the cut. Look at all those lovely ones I could have chosen and didn't. There's my bit of um, gold. That nice piece of printed navy blue and cream. A piece of my Auntie Lily's pillowcase with a lovely scalloped edge. Vintage kimono, this lovely red from a selvage of some that's French General by Moda, I think that's called, French General. Um, a bit of onion skin dyed something. All those lovely pieces, that. All those lovely pieces I could have used, but they didn't come into my hand. But there you go. That was the exercise. I'm not going to cheat and put this away and delete this part of the video and make another one. That is my rather ugly looking piece. So I'm going to put it into my journal. <coughs> <coughs> I'm so sorry. Um, here comes, whoops, here comes my journal with that great big Chinese coin and a, a rusty washer tied to the end of it. And it will remind me when I look back about the concept of choices. And the message is not that when you stop yourself making choices you end up with something hideous. <laughs> the message is hopefully that it's liberating. That, you know. Now I am however going to sew it on with something a bit, a bit neutral. I'm going to let myself do that just to ease my troubled mind. I'm going to use that bit of white floss. I get the same needle and put that blue back in the alts. And here comes another choice. How am I going to sew it on? Uh, or where am I going to sew it on? I'm going to use running stitch, but I think I'm going to sew it across the top. Do you know what I've forgotten? I forget them every week. Excuse me a minute. Giant paper clip. Because they're so handy for holding things in their place. Now there, I've had to make a choice and I've just thrown it on there and I'll leave it that way. But you could be sitting there saying, do I want it that way, that way, you know, which way do I want it? But I'll go with how it landed in the spirit of liberation. And I shall, excuse my arm coming across. 
stitch it across the top there. Make sure I've only got one page. And I always come up first through the cloth with my knot, just because it's more likely to tear through the paper when you anchor it like that. So I come up through the cloth with my knot, and then I'm going to do a back stitch. See, I feel this is now soothing me, after I've just done that exercise, to do this in a more measured way. So I'm noticing that about myself. Apparently, that I found that a little bit stressful, and so I'm now compensating by getting a bit of control back with how I sew this onto here. And trying to kind of learn, try and learn something about myself in the process. So now I'm looking at the back to make sure my stitches line up. And it, yeah, I, I find it interesting. I do find it interesting and slightly stressful at the same time. <laughs> But there we go. It's kind of, you know, getting to know yourself through through this process as well of what we call slow stitching. And why you do what you do. And I did just want to say as well while I finished this, how inspired I've been by your pieces for, for week three. Last week was about cultural textile traditions that um informed you, the theme was diversity, you know, that had inspired you or whatever. And there's been some lovely examples of embroidery, crochet, knitting, felting, um, tatting, lace making, I can't even, you know, as well as patchwork and quilting, cancer, um, and Japanese borrow, and darning, and mending, and all those things. And so many lovely stories from people about their granny or their mum or their auntie or their sisters or, you know, people who used to... Someone's dad darned socks. It's nice to hear of a man darning socks. Um, I know that there are many, many men these days working with textiles. Um, but it's nice to know that back in the day it was also happening. Right, I'm just going to finish that off there like that. And... I don't even know if this piece deserves a dangle. Does it deserve a dangle? I suppose it does. I suppose it does. Poor little piece. Poor little piece that nobody loves. Getting the beat in, which I did remember to keep here. Um, and I'm going to use one of these green beads because just to, they're nearly the same colour as that that kept cropping up. So I'm going to use one of those. That is embracing that that dominating green whoops oh, I caught him he nearly ran away caught him in my lap um, embracing that that bit of green I really wanted to put that back in the orts so that's still usable that's about the limit of what I put in the orts that length there which, in case you're interested to know, is six inches long. That's still, to me, worth saving. But again, that's a personal thing. I'm just going to tie it like that. Quick and easy. Double knot. And now I need my pencil. Get my giant paper clip off. He's got all snagged. There, got him. Oh. My pencil's in my pocket at the front. And I'm going to write under here. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm just going to write choices. I can't bring myself to write anything more elaborate or expressive. But I'll know what I mean. Choices. I'm going to put an exclamation mark just because I feel I need to. <laughs> just to express a little bit the, you know. Mm. I'm going to sign it. K3N and a kiss. K3N, in case you don't know, I, I'm quite happy being called K3N 
All my textile colleagues in the UK call me that to my face. I don't know what they call me behind my back. I'm not sure I want to know. But you can call me Catherine. It, to me, it's my name as much as Catherine is. You can also call me Catherine if you like. Just call me, as they say. And it is the 22nd. 22nd of June, 2024. <clears throat> so that is my... Week four piece, and actually now it's on the book. I dislike it less. I won't say I like it, but I dislike it less. It's almost like it's been given some value by being placed in a book. Um, so I hope you, um, I hesitate to use the word enjoy. I hope you run with that and, you know, observe in yourself how it makes you feel and learn something from it maybe. Maybe you'll create beautiful pieces doing it that way and it will inspire you to make a string quilt like um, my little boys on the wall behind me. Um, I will also just say quickly, one piece in isolation like this will look less nice than a true scrappy quilt because the more scraps you put together, the better it looks. Take my word for it, it's true. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that and I look forward to next Monday, um, which will be, I don't know what yet, because I haven't thought of it. And um, in the meanwhile, I look forward to you joining me again soon for more Cloth Tales. Thank you very much. Bye bye.